Now we're going to look at section B, which is advanced investment appraisal. As you would have studied previously on paper F9, companies are going to need to decide how they're going to take their money and invest it in projects to get back some sort of return. And there's several things that fundamentally we'll need to consider. First of all, what sort of return are we looking for from the projects that we actually invest in? What type of projects do we want to invest in? So, do we want to be environmentally friendly? Are we just looking for investments that are going to grow the business? And we need to consider not only the monetary return, but also what these projects actually look like and the effect that they're going to have on our overall business. And other things we may need to consider as well. Time frame. And any real options that go with these projects. So not only do we need to think about the monetary return we get back, the impact it's going to have on the overall business, does it look good, does it look bad, we also need to think about how long is this project actually going to take, but also think about the opportunities that these projects might give us, so will they lead on to follow-on opportunities that wouldn't be available to us if we didn't take on this project in the first place. To enable us to start looking at these concepts, we need to just quickly go back and revise the basic net present value calculations that you should have looked at when you studied your skills papers. We can start off looking at this basic pro forma that we have for a net present value calculation. We'll expand on this for format as we go on, as we start to look at international overseas investment appraisal. But for the time being, this is going to be your fundamental template that you can use to appraise all projects from a net present value point of view. And just to recap what we're looking at with net present value, we're going to be looking at all of the cash flows that are included from a particular project, all the inflows and the outflows that are going to occur by taking on this project, and then we're going to discount them back to work out what this project is worth in present value terms. If you can't remember the basic concepts of discounting, please go back and refer to your notes from your F9 paper. So what we have here on the basic pro forma, start off by listing out all of the years that the cash flows take place. And we are only interested in cash flows. We're not interested in any provisions or accounting concepts such as depreciation. We are only interested in real cash that comes into the business or real cash that goes out of the business. We will then look at operating cash flows. Now, we can have inflows and outflows, but what I mean by operating cash flows, these will have a direct tax effect. We're looking at things here like your revenue that comes in from selling your products, your costs such as material and labour, all of these things that are either going to increase your profit or decrease your profit, and as a result of it, they will have a direct effect on the total amount of tax that you will have to pay. Once you've worked these out, you can then work out the tax. The tax rate will be given in the question. So are we going to tax the profits of 25%, 30%, etc.? The question will also tell you whether the tax is going to be paid in arrears, as it is on this format here, where the tax paid will be one year after your cash flows that have come in, or it could tell you that the tax is going to be paid in the same year that the liability arises, in which case all these cash flows will be shifted to the left so it, they occur one year earlier. Once you've de dealt with your taxation, you can then deal with any other cash flows that come in. You have your initial investment for the project, which will typically be going out in year naught, and we consider year naught to be anything that takes place today. We may then have some scrap proceeds if the project involves buying a particular piece of machinery. If it can be scrapped at the end of the project, we'll have a cash inflow coming back through. You may also have working capital. 
Now, in summary, working capital is the investment you're going to need in things such as your inventory or your receivables to get the business going or this particular project going. And therefore, immediately, you may have to pay out some money to cover your inventory for your raw materials. However, this is, in effect, going to be double counted with your cash outflows in your operating activities. And therefore, what we need to do is make an adjustment for this so we don't double count and, as such, reduce our overall profit. So what we end up doing is taking our working capital back out at the end of the project. And whatever's been invested in the working capital will need to come back out at the end of the operating activities. Now, it is also possible to have entries that take place on the years in between. And all we need to be looking at here is have there been any changes in our total investment in working capital. If there is, all we need to do is each year bring in the change in your working capital. For example, if we started off with an investment of $100,000 in year naught and the total investment in working capital increased to 110000 at the end of year one, then the entries we would have would be $100,000 cash outflow in year naught, then a $10,000 cash outflow in year one, just bringing in the change in our working capital. But then whatever's been invested in working capital during the project will then need to be released at the end of the project, and therefore we would have a cash inflow coming through, in this example, of $110,000 in year three. We will also then need to deal with our capital allowances where relevant. Now, capital allowances are the government's version of depreciation. We don't allow depreciation to a net present value calculation because it's not a cash flow, but what we will do instead is bring in tax allowable depreciation in the form of capital allowances, which will therefore reduce the overall tax bill. Now, we'll look at this in more detail when we bring in a small example in a few moments' time, but the basic rule for this, you will have a figure for your capital allowance, including a balancing allowance or balancing charge at the end, in every year that you're going to have a tax payment. So on this example, because our tax is in arrears, we have tax payments in years 2, 3 and 4, you would have capital allowances in years 2 and 3, and then a balancing allowance or a balancing charge in year 4. Once you've worked out all these figures you can then add them all up to calculate the net cash flow for each year, and then using the relevant discount factors, which you can pick up from the tables provided to you in the ACCA exams, you can then discount back all of these cash flows to give you a present value for each year. Now, if you remember from what you've studied before, these present values represent what these future cash flows are worth in today's terms. We can then... Add together all these present values, which will give us a net present value. The basic decision for net present value is if your net present value is greater or equal to zero, you will accept the project. What this is basically telling you, look at all of your cash flows you have from the project. If the present value of your net cash flows generated from this project are greater than your initial investment, you should therefore accept the project. And if they're less than your initial investment, you reject the project. And for reasons that we will see later on, if the net present value did turn out to be zero exactly, you will still take on the project because it is bringing in the return that you actually require.